Hello there Aries, welcome to your April. So um, when I was meditating for this month's reading for you, by the way, happy birthday. I hope you enjoy yourself this month. So when I was meditating, um, I saw two images and let me just relay that uh, information to you. Actually three images. So the first thing that I saw was, and keep in mind, I don't normally see a lot of uh, images that represents modern day. But in this instance for you guys, I did see something. There's this woman, she's driving in a car, and it looks like modern, present day. Um, she pulls over, parks on the side of the road. She takes out a flower, um, a, a bouquet of flowers, and also like a gift basket with snacks and, and food in it. And she walks up to this really cute house. And um, she knocks on the door, and somebody opens the door, and they're so ecstatic that she's there. So I feel like some of you might be visiting people or you are definitely preparing your home, uh, cleaning up your place or having people come to see you. And the energy that I'm getting from this person that, you know, uh, brought the gift basket and the flowers, I don't feel like they might have just, I don't feel like they're just coming to see you for your birthday. I feel like it's something more. It's like a dear, a really, really dear old friend of yours that's making a comeback in the picture and that wants to reconnect with you. I also feel like it's somebody that might have, um, from now until um, your birthday time, whenever that may be in the next year. So you want to make sure that you allow that door for positive energies, positive people to come into the picture and kind of block out those that are, have been taking advantage of you or that have brought you a lot of uh, regret and sadness in the past so that you can, you know, start the new year right, okay? Because uh, in in the astro astrology world, we do believe that um, energy changes on your solar return month okay so i feel like for many of you this is something you kind of have to actively do but i see like you're waiting on a person a long awaited uh reunion or a long awaited um coming home sense of coming home or visitation from a person that is very very dear to you i feel like there is a platonic uh a more platonic um in many 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 drunken nights of bad decisions you know like both of you it's like you're your partner in crime it's almost like the, the, the go-to gal or the go-to girl that knows all your dark past, but they don't care. You know, they, they, they care about you as a person. So I feel like you really grew with this person. You really found yourself with this person. And there have been many, many drunken nights. And they, you know, they always made sure you, um, you were hydrated. They, they made sure that they took care of you. And no matter what, there's this financial give and take too. They, they never took advantage of you. They never um, let you be the one to always, always, always foot the bill. Everything was really, really balanced and very solid with this person. And I do feel for many of you, uh, you could be men or women, um, you might have been taken advantage of in the past where you, somebody was either dating you or just, you know, uh, dating you, but the, the give and take in that relationship might not have been balanced, okay? So you might have been dating somebody that was, um, that made you foot the bill constantly. You might have been in a relationship too where they might not have, you know, forced you to foot the bill or expected you to do that all the time. But I feel like financially you found yourself drained or emotionally you found yourself drained. And um, I, I feel like that's almost a signal for you that that wasn't a healthy relationship. And so you have let go of some people, okay? You, you've had to close your doors. You've had to, you know, physically bar entry into your life, into your heart, into your environment, some people that were not good for you. And so I feel like you, you, whoever that's coming to visit you, it could be a platonic friend, but the give and take and the financial uh, back and forth between the two of you was so balanced and so even that it kind of um, set the, the, the bar for the next person. You want to find somebody like this person. You want somebody who's fair, who treats you right, who doesn't take advantage of you, who, you know, there's like this balance in the give and take. 
and I feel like you know you're you're setting this per you're putting this person on a pedestal, and they're kind of setting the bar for your friends, for your family. For the next person that you date because they're pretty phenomenal so i definitely feel there's somebody who has such a big heart they're so generous they're so fair they're so intelligent they're not um they're they're not just like a bleeding heart where they're generous to everybody and they get taken advantage of no they they have proper boundaries but i feel like with you they trust you as well and so you really are anticipating um either this person coming into the picture or you're really really missing and you know really uh waiting on the presence or even this person coming back into the picture okay um the second image that i saw was it was very very short um, I see like a train going up the mountains and um, I'm, I'm hearing like, you know, it's struggling to go up the mountain. So I'm hearing like losing steam. And then all of a sudden it, it kind of like pushes itself past this mountaintop and then it coasts downhill. So what I feel is letting off steam, okay, releasing steam to get a little bit of a, a push to your engine to, to push past some type of a phase in your life, some type of a hump. Or some type of um, uh, possibly a an obstacle in your life, and to keep going. Okay, so that's what I'm feeling. Um, the third image that I saw was um, I see this man and a woman, and the um, the vibe that I got. They're they're walking. They're they're like in their hiking gear, but it's not like an intensive hiking. They're walking along a trail, and it's a pretty flat trail, so it's not like a strenuous trail. And it seems like they might have been on the third or fourth date. They're still trying to get to know each other. So they're still a little bit um, kind of, you know, timid around each other. And the, the, the topics of conversations are still, you know, new. And they're still trying to get to know each other and trying to explore. And um, the, the man is taller than the woman. And uh, when he talks, the woman looks at him and she's like in awe, in admiration of this man that's next to her. Because he's, it seems like he's intelligent, he knows everything, he knows a lot of topics, but it also feels as if he knows, um, like he knows what he wants, he knows what career he wants to get into, he knows what he wants to do five years from now, ten years from now. He also is somebody that is a little bit of a life, um, that's a, um, what I'm sensing is, he really, really wants to change the world. He has a very strong humanitarian streak about him. He wants to leave the world a better place for, for the next generation. He, he has really strong ideals and passion. And you know, a lot of the times people talk, right? But I feel like this is a, um, this is a person that is very pure hearted. They're also able to follow through with their plans or at least plan out a course of action that will allow them to kind of realize their dream. So you're talking to somebody and you're looking up at them very starry eyed and as, as well in sheer admiration of this person because they're so unique and their goals and their dreams are so big and, and so inspiring that it inspires you. So I feel like you're narrowing down your friendship circle, okay? You're definitely narrowing down the people that you let into your life, the people that you want to be around, and you're not putting yourself in situations where you give a lot of yourself and you waited for the other person to reciprocate, but, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't see the value in you, they didn't see the goodness in you, and they or they might have taken um, for granted the fact that you're always going to be around. So I feel like, you know, you had to close some doors and you've had to kind of, you know, bar entry to these people that might have been quite self-serving. OK, um, so let me talk about the energies. The two cards that really stood out for me, first of all, we have here the two fives. And the five energies are always indicative of major sweep like swift sweeping changes in our lives and first of all we have here the five of swords and the five of swords is um the aftermath of a situation like a, a battle an aftermath of an argument an aftermath even of a party okay like dealing reeling from and recoiling from the aftermath 
um, coming into the month of April, especially the beginning of April, there might be a situation where I feel like, you know, you have to pick up the pieces. You have to do the cleanup. You have to be the one where you're physically, you know, taking care of a situation. And whoever was involved, they're no longer in the picture, okay? So what I feel is like with this card in this deck, the, the two people that, you know, in the traditional Rider weight deck, the two people that walked away, they're no longer in this picture, and so what I feel is happening here is you're doing the damage control, you're doing the picking up, you're doing the cleanup, and the other people are not there. And I'm, I'm almost hearing this guy in the card saying, go figures. Of course they're not going to be there. Why did I assume they're going to be there? Of course not. And so it's a situation where you feel like I'm kind of alone in this. I wish they would stick around and offer help. I wish they would, you know, step up. I wish they would... Um, do their diligence. I wish they would be more considerate. But here I am. And I'm the one that has to, you know, take care of it once again. So I feel like this is an ongoing uh, cyclical pattern that you've had with people in your life where you give a lot of yourself, a lot of your energy. You do a lot for other people. And yet you're not getting the compensation. And it boils down to the fact that the other people were not considerate. You know, they, they like, they came, they dined, they partied, or whatever it was, and then they left. And so it, it made you feel almost like taken for granted. That's what I'm feeling. And we also have as well the Five of Cups, realizing people's true colors. You know, at the end of the day, this is like uh, spilled milk, okay? It's the wine on the carpet, okay, the, the glass of red wine knocked over on the carpet because somebody was careless, because somebody was clumsy, because somebody um, didn't either. I'm, I'm feeling like respect the situation. So I'm seeing a lot of cleanup here that you've had to do. And I'm also feeling a situation where you might have felt like they say they're going to do this, they didn't follow through, and then I had to step up and um, kind of like, you know, the baton was, was passed to me inadvertently, and now I have to step up and I have to fix the situation. And so there's definitely something here where somebody should have handled it, but they didn't. They might have told you they're going to take care of it, but they didn't. And so you have to be the one in charge and you have to be the one to kind of like clean up their mess. And I feel like this is you moving away from that and leaving this person behind, okay? It might have been a group of people. It might have been like um, three people where you start to see their true, true colors and you start to see that this situation is not worth my energy or these friendships, these social acquaintances, this environment was not good for me to be in because they don't uphold their end of the bargain. So we are moving away from this energy and we are transitioning. So I feel like, you know, there was a lot of, um, there was a situation here you've been contending with for quite some time. And I feel for many of you, somebody was behaving in a very childish manner. You know, kind of like the, the baby knocking over, um, things and then it spills all over the rug and all over the carpet and it stains the carpet stains the rug and even if you get like a professional rug cleaner they they can't really get rid of the stain that's what it feels like to me and so you're in a predicament coming into the month of april this is the strong air energy okay so aquarius gemini libra and water energy especially pisces um i feel like they're flaky Somebody is flaky. Somebody has like um, a very trepidatious types of energy. Okay, so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. And I feel like, you know, if there has been like a lot of waiting around, okay, this is a card about long distance, two of wands, waiting for a situation to come into the picture, waiting for you to be able to step out and step up into the world. And to kind of like get your plans moving. But if you've been waiting for another person, there's an energy here of somebody who's not reliable, who's left you feeling kind of like put on the back burner, who didn't really follow through on what they're supposed to do. 
And so you have to let go of this energy. This is the month where you realize what, what it means on an energetic level to cut cord and to let go of past emotional situations that are no longer serving you. I feel like, you know, as a tarot reader, I say this all the time. We cannot move on and, and have new things come into the picture unless we sever ties with the old. And the best way that I can explain this is, let's talk about nations, okay? Like nation building, okay? And, you know, I, I hope this, this example is appropriate because I feel like it might be because, you know, Aries is the god of war, right? So let's talk about like um, decolonization, okay? So like, like if a country has been colonized, right? And um, when the colonizers can no longer afford to keep that colony, they evacuate, right? Like they, they withdraw their troops and they hightail it out of there because like financially it's not feasible to maintain that colony. And then if they're facing a lot of like insurgency, a lot of resistance from the local population against their rule, they're going to hightail it out of there. And what they leave behind is a power vacuum, right? So one of those militant groups, one of those insurgent groups, or one of the, 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 the ruling elites in that country will come in and fill that power vacuum, right? And so energetically, if we're talking about moving on, if we're talking about making room for the new, we need to create those areas of vacuum so that the universe can come in or the right people can come in and fill in those vacuums. And energetically, if we allow the universe to just kind of like naturally fill in those vacuums for us, it can create new energy, it can create new opportunities, it can create a new space for you. Okay, so I feel like many of you, this is the month where that whole concept about cord cutting, where the whole concept about letting go of the past, severing ties with the past, so that energetically you're no longer feeding into it, so that you can physically pull back your energy away from it, and that you can consolidate your energy and siphon it off to avenues and people that are better for you. So what I'm drawn to here with this card is, this is the bridge, okay? You see that little span of, that little arc? And then it, it spans across two different land mass, okay? So this is the bridge. You're definitely emerging from one space where you weren't sure. You were kept in the dark. You weren't sure how somebody felt about you. You're emerging into another space, bridging that gap, going into the other landmass, finding your new area, finding your new people, finding the new opportunities that are available for you. And I feel with this moon energy, this is a very, very psychic card. It indicates as well, the bridge to get to your next destination is not going to be, you know, something that's glaring in your face and it's going to hit you, you know, like kind of like just front and center. It's something that your intuition has guided you all along. And it's something that emotionally you felt, this is something that I have to do. You're being very, like you're, you're being compelled in a very emotional way to move away in this manner, in this direction, because that's what your heart really, really wants. And so what I feel here is as much as it can be, you know, um, difficult to recoup like the sunk cost that we invested in a friendship, that we invested in a situation, we kind of need to uh, learn that sometimes if we continue in it, it's going to force us to invest a lot more. So we need to kind of like cut our losses and move forward, move forward, okay? Um, I'm seeing for many of you, there might have been a situation here where there was some money lost. So I, I feel like you might have paid somebody to do something for you. They say they're going to do it. And then the end result, either they deliver in a very uh, subpar way, like they, they deliver mediocre goods or below your expectations. And you're just like, I'm not having this. 
I, I do feel some of you um, upset, okay? And then I also feel like some of you might have been like, you know, this was not the terms of their agreement. You need to redo it. So I feel like you're giving somebody that um, kind of like that second chance to get something done right, okay? And I feel like that might have been in a consultancy type of a situation. I'm also feeling as well, you might have paid somebody to do some type of construction as well, the operational aspect, the logistical aspect, as well as the human aspect. If I were to be self-employed, if I were to, you know, start my own business, I know I would already know how to do everything. So many of you are contemplating and flirting with that idea. And I feel like there's something coming in for the month of April that will allow you to do that. And I feel like if you're thinking about, you know, I need land, I need um, uh, to rent a space, there's going to be something coming in for you that will allow you to do that. Either getting a lease for really, really cheap, getting like an office space for a really, really good price, or even being able to network and having somebody tell you, you know, uh, I'm interested in doing this, do you want to join up with me? So somebody might be asking you for some type of a partnership. Um, and I'm seeing it, especially with this card, Two of Rods. This is some type of a uh, far away, long distance um, communication with another person, partnership. But also, this Page of Pentacles, this is an offer coming through from another person for some type of a professional or some type of a financial entanglement, okay? And I feel like you want to do that, but once again, you like your independence so much that you're not sure if getting into a partnership is going to be good for you. If it's something that is too demanding of you because you like to do things your way. But I definitely feel like this is a situation that can work out really well. Many of you might have started a new job, okay? And if the new job shows up like this, page of pentacles, where you might feel like you're underemployed, where you might feel like the, the uh, financial payout is not big enough, I feel like you're going to stick with it just a little bit longer until you have the initial like seed capital or startup money in order for you to start your own business. So I definitely feel a lot of people on the verge of like an entrepreneurial breakthrough and being able to be in charge of your own hours, be able to be self-employed and being able to manifest your dreams and make that a reality because you don't want to be, it's, it's almost like your, your skills are already maxed out. You already know how to do everything. So you don't feel like you want to stay there. I'm going to pull out, um, can you give me three clarifiers for the tower, please? We have here the Ace of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, and the Nine of Wands, okay? So we definitely have a situation here. So I'm asking what the tower represents. And what I have is your overwhelming sense of independence, okay, with the Queen of Wands. And then I do have another person. This is somebody that I mentioned they're coming in because they want a partnership. And I feel like on the romantic front with this Ace of Cups, this is an offer that is being made for you from somebody to you. There might have been a situation in the past where things were kind of like at a standstill with this person. And I feel like they've been, they might have been non-committal to you in the past. They honestly did not prioritize you. They took you for granted. They kind of uh, went around the world, found themselves, okay? Might have dated here and there. Might have uh, thought like, oh, I could do better. Okay, honestly, I feel that. And then they're coming back in now. And this is somebody that, you know, I feel like it might have been a great love. Like one of those, uh, we don't have many great loves in our lifetime. You know, like each person, I, I would say there's like about three, four major, major loves. This was one of your big loves, okay? Um, I feel like they went, found themselves, dated a few people. And then they realize that you're a really, really good catch. And now they're trying to make a comeback in your life. And I see you very, very guarded. 
I see you asking them, you know, what exactly happened? Why are you back? Like, did you think my door was going to be open? Like, what were you thinking? And I feel like many of you want to hear that story. I'm also feeling for some of you, if there has been a person, this is kind of like the five of pentacles, through thick and thin, through sickness and in health, you know, in sickness and in health. Uh, this is like the the person that you you would have like it's the ride or die person it's the person you would have sacrificed everything you had to be with okay this is like the big big love um I feel like there's they have stumbled on some rough patches in their lives and I mean rough um possibly like illnesses of um like a family member and I feel like they need they're coming to you because they kind of need you to be that pillar of strength for them. And I'm sensing as well, you might, you know, be, you might be the shoulders for them to lean on. But I also feel as well, um, past relationship partners that might have been, that might have put you on the back burner. And I want you to be very, very careful. Past relationship partners that didn't see the true value in you now trying to make a comeback in your life and I, I feel like you kind of need to stand your ground okay this is a card about the sentry the guy or the the person that guards the gate and he's going to ask like do you have an appointment did you have a, a letter did I give you permission to be here did someone give you permission to be here so I feel like you kinda have to stand your ground you kinda have to be a little bit put on a little bit of a tough act and get the other person to say what they're going to say. But I definitely feel like a, a past love energy coming back into the picture because they're dealing with some rough things in their lives. And they're appreciating the fact that you have always been there for them. And I feel like in a way, you knew they were going to come back. They always come back. You knew they were going to come back. You're definitely standing your ground here. Which is good, okay? So that is all that I have for you, um, Aries. I'm hoping... So this is for the, the beginning of April. I'm hoping this energy will clear up. And I feel like you have to trust your intuition on this. If this is like an ongoing cyclical thing, you guys can be very, very stubborn. But what I just want you to take away from this is if it's an ongoing cyclical pattern where things happen and then they reemerge, okay? over and over and over again with the same people it's not going to change and so you kind of need to let that go because you're at a, a stage in your life where you don't have that energy to give to dead end relationships and and dead beats like um past partners or even friends that that don't appreciate your value and lovers that don't appreciate your value you need to move on okay um, so I'm hoping this energy will clear up for you and I feel like you already know what you need to do when certain people come to your door You need to kind of bar entry. You need to just you know, keep that door closed um, You can talk to them through the people, but Don't open that door. Don't open that floodgate. Don't Revisit that past situation. It is what it is. Okay, and and I feel like there was a lot of strife here in the past There were a lot of mean words said and I just feel like somebody did not appreciate what you had to offer. Okay, they, they, they felt like, oh, I can, you know, get that anywhere. That's what it feels like to me. And so s reserve your space, reserve your energy, reserve the sanctity of your home, of your heart for somebody that inspires you, not somebody that will, you know, chip away at your self-esteem. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that and I wish you all the best. For those of you who are looking for a private reading, I do have um, a link in the description box for a psychic. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. She's phenomenal. I highly recommend that you give a um, get a reading from her. You can find her website and schedule an appointment for yourself in the description box below. I will talk to you in about two weeks time. Take care.